Hey, my name is Ray, and you're watching Raya Books. Today's video is the 17th installment in my currently checked out series. If you're new to my channel and have never seen any of my currently checked out videos before, essentially the purpose of this series is to raise awareness about the different types of resources that public libraries provide. I live in San Francisco, so the San Francisco Public Library System is the library that I utilize the most often. However, I also use other libraries throughout the state of California. At the end of each video, I will be giving you guys a price tally on how much money I saved by utilizing the resources available to me through my local public libraries. All of the books and e-resources mentioned in this video have been checked out between December 13th and December 20th. The first book that I have checked out is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig, and I have this one checked out from the MarinNet Library System. I read two other fiction books by this author, the first of which was The Humans, which I absolutely loved, and the second of which was How to Stop Time, which I didn't exactly love, but I did more or less appreciate. However, I am willing to give him a third shot because I do really enjoy his writing style and his overall storytelling structure. This novel is apparently about a library in which there are an infinite number of books that all have an infinite number of stories that go along with an infinite number of realities, which sounds absolutely fascinating. The main character is a woman named Nora who stumbles upon this library one day and she is given the opportunity to read all of her potential lives and choose which one is the most fulfilling for her to go and live out, which also sounds incredibly interesting. I do really love a good library setting book and I also love a good main character can choose their own life based off of seeing different scenarios of their life trope situation. So I am looking forward to reading this one. The second book that I currently have checked out is Nights When Nothing Happened by Simon Hahn and this one I also have checked out from the MarinNet library system. I came across this one back in early November in a New York Times book review article by, I believe her name is Tessaly LaForce, which is a really dope name if that is her name. And the way how she wrote about this novel just sounded so incredibly interesting and engaging and absolutely made me want to read it. So of course I requested it from the library. This novel is about an immigrant family from China who has immigrated to Texas and they are finally feeling secure enough to have a second child and bring their firstborn child over from China. When the younger child starts to sleepwalk, her adventures upset the family's fragile stability and cause them to examine each other and what family means to them and also to examine some of the secrets that they have themselves. I will say that the review of this book definitely made me more interested in it than the synopsis did, so I'm a little bit wary and a little bit concerned about it, but I am looking forward to reading it. And I am wondering, have any of you guys ever encountered a review or kind of just read a blurb about a book that makes you far more interested in it than the synopsis ever did because I think it's a really really weird feeling and I'm not comfortable with it and I don't know if it's common so let me know if you've also experienced that kind of feeling. The third book that I currently have checked out is They Never Learn by Lane Fargo and I have this one checked out from the San Francisco Public Library. I believe I came across this one when I was looking for spooky things to read in October and of course it's way past October now and I'm pretty sure every October I think I'm going to read spooky things and alas every October I don't read spooky things and it ends up bleeding into December, January, and February. So at least I tried. This novel features an English professor who every year at her university goes on a hunt for the worst man and then murders him. 
However, her body count is starting to gain attention and she discovers that there has been an investigation opened to get to the root of who is killing all of these male students. At the same time and at the same university, there is a girl who has finally gotten away from the clutches of her abusive father and one day she discovers that her roommate has been sexually assaulted at a party and she takes her fantasies of revenge into reality. It sounds like an incredibly intense read and I'm a little bit concerned about reading the parts about sexual assault just because that is kind of one of my content trigger warning type of situations, but I'm still kind of sort of looking forward to reading it. I'm not overly excited about it, but I am a little bit excited about it. You know what I mean? The fourth book that I have currently checked out is The Appointment by Katerina Vlokmir, I believe, and I have this one checked out from the San Francisco Public Library. Absolutely not a single clue why I requested this. I cannot for the life of me think of what would make me request it or where I would have stumbled across it, but the synopsis for it seems really, really interesting and very, very tongue-in-cheek. Essentially, this book is a monologue told from the point of view of a young German woman who is struggling with her sexuality and her identity. There are also mentions of Hitler-themed sexual fantasies, the medicinal property of squirrel tails, and overbearing mothers. It sounds like this novel has the potential to be incredibly funny, and in fact, the novel does promise deliciously dark and subversively funny funniness. So I am looking forward to reading this. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it actually is funny because the last couple of books that I thought were going to be funny were not funny at all. They were very like serious and a little bit sad and just explored themes that I couldn't find the funny in. So I'm hoping I'm really, really hoping that this one has some level of haha -ha humor to it. The fifth book that I have currently checked out is Prosper's Demon by K.J. Parker, and this one is checked out from the San Francisco Public Library System. So remember that novella keyword search that I did several weeks back? Well, that is one of the books that was actually from that original search. The library in which it was in was closed and that library has recently reopened for curbside service so I was finally, finally, finally able to get this book and I am super excited about reading it. This novella features an unnamed narrator who is a morally questionable exorcist and a man who is incredibly science driven who is possessed by a demon who wants to make the world's first philosopher king. It sounds so good and I did read one part of a review that says it's also pretty like gory and a little bit a little bit creepy spooky messy so I am deeply looking forward to reading this one and the fifth and last book that I currently have checked out is Real Life by Brandon Taylor and this is checked out from the Marin Net library system I am 99.9% .9 sure that I came across this book in the 2020 Booker Prize shortlist and I've been trying to steadily read more books that have been nominated or books that have won awards. In the past, I used to avoid books that have been nominated or won awards like The Plague just because I feel like it it just limited my reading too much if I only wanted to read books that other people thought were fantastic or some random panel of people thought were fantastic. But I'm starting to learn that library patrons really, really like when you have read books that are on these award lists and when you could readily recommend a book that's on an award list. And it's so much better to recommend a book that you have actually personally read. So. I'm trying to read more books that have won and or been nominated for awards. Anywho, this novel features a gay, introverted African-American man named Wallace who is studying biochem at a predominantly white university somewhere in the Midwest. 
There's also a series of events that take place over a weekend with some straight dude that expose currents of resentment and desire within Wallace's friend group and community. It definitely sounds like it's the type of book that would win an award or be nominated for an award. So I am a little bit nervous about reading it just because I've spent so long avoiding books that have won awards. And usually when I read books that have won awards, I end up feeling like, did I miss, did I miss the greatness of this? So I'm hoping that I'm not going to miss the greatness of it and actually have a good experience reading it. And now for the two non-physical book things that I have currently checked out. The first e-resource that I have currently checked out is the audiobook version of Ring Shout. I have this one checked out through SFPL's Libby Offerings. I read Ring Shout a few weeks ago and I absolutely loved it. I will leave a link to my video on my thoughts on Ring Shout along with the blog post that I did for my thoughts on Ring Shout in the description box down below. So please feel free to check that out if you actually want to know further what I thought about said novella. <laughs> I've heard some pretty good things about the audiobook and while I am not an audiobook person at all, I did decide to give it a try. Mostly because I'm starting to realize that on my commute to my librarian gig, I do prefer listening to podcasts or kind of short stories more than I like listening to music. So my main goal is to listen to this mostly while I'm commuting to and from my librarian gig. And a digital resource that I used this past week is Flipster through the San Francisco Public Library. If you've never heard of Flipster before, basically Flipster is incredibly similar to RB Digital in the sense that it offers a ton, a ton, a ton of e-magazines. However, unlike RB Digital, Flipster has advanced search options and also allows you to search for specific articles within a magazine's issue collection. I was shook when I discovered that Flipster has coloring books. Absolutely shook because I have been wanting to color for the longest just for relaxation purposes, but I'd be getting stressed out when I look at coloring books because I'm like, oh, am I actually going to enjoy it? What if I mess up coloring? What if I don't have a good time with it? What if I have to buy like a whole new coloring book? Like just all of these what ifs, which are not relaxing at all, come to the forefront of my mind. So buying the coloring book has never happened because I psych myself out. So when I saw that Flipster offers four different adult coloring books, I was like, oh my gosh, thank goodness, because now I can finally get my coloring on. And that's it. That is everything that I have checked out and all of the e-resources that I have utilized within this past week. And of course, the real question is, how much money did I save? And this week I saved a grand total of $151.69. The breakdown by purchasing location is as follows. Amazon would have gotten $74.71. Green Apple would have gotten $68.15 and bookshop.org would have gotten $8.83. And by library system, San Francisco Public Library saved me $77.82 while MarinNet saved me $73.87. And my questions for you guys, the first one is the usual question is what do you currently have checked out? And if you don't have anything checked out, let me know what you're currently reading. And the bonus question is, how do you feel about book award lists? Do you love them? Do you read exclusively from them? Do you try to read pretty much everything that's on a particular award list? Let me know in the comments down below. I already told you guys that I used to think book lists were incredibly overrated, but now I see I see how important they can be to some people and I feel really bad for thinking that they were overrated once upon a time. And that is pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed watching it, please give it a thumbs up. It does help me out in the YouTube algorithm. And if you ever want to see and or hear me babble about books ever again, 
please hit that subscribe button. It really does mean the world to me. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day and reading wonderful books, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!